No surprise and no secret that I'm a big fan of 4 Against Darkness. I like the system so much that I created my own game based on that system, 4 Against the Great Old Ones. So today I want to share the joy of some 4 Against Darkness materials that came out recently. In particular, two issues of the fanzine The Lantern. Uh, they also came with these two things. I seem to remember that the bookmark comes with issue 1 and the bookmark with the maze, the playable maze, in issue 2. Uh, I may be wrong, maybe the other way around, because I got them together. And uh, yes, a playable bookmark, in which you just start from here, you move uh, through this maze, resolve encounters using the tables in Fragments Darkness, and when you reach the final boss, then you encounter the final box, boss, which is on the other side of the bookmark, and I'm not going to show that to you. And yes, due to the nature of these products, I will have to be a little bit vague at times, because I don't want to spoil surprises. But mainly, the Lantern contains programmed adventures and additional materials such as extra bosses and extra monsters that you can drop into other campaigns of Fragments Darkness. I'm gonna show you these, so if you really want no spoilers, uh, close your eyes, but because verbally I will avoid spoilers as much as possible, but if you see some of the text, then you will see some of the text. So you have been warned. Issue 1, something truly incredible, it comes with each issue, each episode, <laughs> each copy, each copy of the game comes with a unique drawing by Sfili Goy, the designer, and with a unique rule that you, only you, the owner of that, of that copy, can use. For example, I can use this rule, and you can't, I don't want you to feel bad about it. But you can, this is mine. So, talk about all those philosophies about the mechanical reproduction or the work of art. Booyah, how about this one? It's mechanically reproduced, the fanzine, but it is still uh, unique. And so, just me, once per adventure, I can choose a character who normally does not add level to their attack rolls. They can do so, and at the end they lose a life due to exhaustion, which can be a really good deal against some tough monsters. Then some of the materials, Tumbar, the Curse of the Unliving Ones, it is a programmed adventure, so you see the map here, you start from here, you read the intro, and then you will simply navigate this dungeon, uh, reading the paragraphs corresponding to the different, uh, to the different sections, so 6, 22, and so on and so forth. And so, whoop, don't look if you don't want to have any spoiler. It's a really fun adventure. I actually played it with three children, age seven and eight. One is my daughter, two were two friends of hers. I wanted to introduce them to Four Against Darkness. Well, my daughter Louise already knows it. She wanted to introduce her friends. We played it. They all had a blast. And now, guess what? We have started her We started a children. Four Against Darkness Club, in which I GM the game, and they slaughter monsters and loot treasures. This is... Uh, who is that? I don't know. I don't know how no, that is. I don't want to give you any spoilers. A boss fight that you can use in Four Against Darkness. Another programmed adventure, very short. An adventure that was originally published in Italy on a t-shirt, which makes it the first, to my knowledge, wearable dungeon. New kind of minion. And another programmed adventure, and then another. So this is the essence of the first issue. The second issue does not have the special rules, sorry about that. Also comes with programmed adventures, but in particular there is a different uh, uh, emphasis here. Because, well first there is an interesting uh, dungeon in which you're climbing this this spore spore spores written tree full of fungi people uh, they are mad because some of the local villagers were picking mushrooms and you know what that of course they're mad they were like they're, that's their children mushroom people you 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 start collecting mushroom in an area known for having mushroom people you're looking for trouble but the emphasis that I was going to mention is that actually this issue here has two 
settlements, uh, two open air adventures I should say. One is the Mist of Varunor in which you are uh, exploring the area surrounding the city but uh, in which there are mysterious mists and the interesting thing is that again it's open air you even have a bulletin board for side quests, how cool is that? And then you have, see I'm going quickly, flipping through the pages quickly to avoid spoilers, and then you have the Uncharted Settlement, which is a procedural uh, system of tables to generate a settlement. You can play multiple times, you can add it to any uh, adventure of Fur Against Darkness that you want to set in or around a settlement, you just change the name and you roll on the tables and you will generate a different location. And I really much like the idea of randomly generated open air places, again so much so that the game that I created in the system indeed is one in which you explore uh, the United States instead of like a single dungeon. And then another little goodie that I wanted to show you is you need to order separate, it's not, uh, does not come with the lantern, is a screen adventure. I swear, you got the bookmark adventure, the t-shirt adventure, the screen adventure. You, you gotta be careful, you turn your back, you don't know where they're gonna slap an adventure next. The advantage of a screen adventure is that, I don't know, if you're playing role-playing games with Smurfs, you can actually use it as a dungeon master screen. No, in truth, the, the idea is that here you have your paper, your dice, and so it's everything up there. Very easy to read, you don't need to flip through tables, although from time to time. You will turn it this way, but it's only one flip. And again, booyah, this time you're generating a goblin village. So instead of rolling for rooms, you roll for different sections of the village and then you roll to see what's there. The world of Four Against Darkness keeps growing and becoming more and more interesting, richer, more variety. It's a system that I love, I love the elegant simplicity at the beginning and I love how sandbox it is becoming with each new release, each new expansion, each new thing. In a previous video talk I showed you the tarot decks, there are just so many ways in which the game can play it, it is amazing. So uh, as a fan of 4 Against Darkness, I'm very happy with these new releases for the game.